What is going on guys? I hope you are well and today we're going to be going over the Templar changes in update 33 and what builds I'm looking at running next patch. Templar overall has been one of the best classes in this current meta we are in, up there with magic decays and stamina and eye blades. The reason being is Templars can stack high spell damage due to their class passives while also getting insane healing potential from it. They have a great offensive toolkit, amazing sustain, strong healing over time and burst heals, a great CC and toppling charge and javelin, and the list goes on and on. Let's just say they are a very well-rounded class. Overall, the class adjustments in update 33 lean more towards a buff rather than a nerf to the class as a whole, giving them more offensive pressure capabilities, especially against skilled players, which we will deep dive into all these changes in just one second. But before we get started, if you guys are enjoying the content, don't forget to subscribe, it's free and you'll never miss an upload. And also, if you found this video helpful and want to make my day, just tickle that like button just a little bit. Just tickle it a little bit. And I would greatly appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. So first, let's deep dive into the class changes and see what they adjusted. The first thing they did here was to Burning Light. And this isn't necessarily a buff or a nerf, it's kind of a slight adjustment that mainly affects Stamina Templar. So what they did was, this passive now only deals magic damage rather than magicka or physical damage, but continues to scale off of your highest offensive stats. So Burning Light procs whenever you deal damage with an Adric Spear ability. So whenever you hit your puncturing sweeps or budding jabs, whenever you deal damage four times in rapid succession, this is when Burning Light procs. It's like a little bit of extra burst. And they changed this to only magic damage rather than magicka or physical. Now Magic Templars had high enough spell damage regardless, so they still only dealt magic damage, while Stamina Templars, with their Burning Light proc, dealt physical damage. So this is where this is adjusting in the Stamina category more than more than the Magical would, obviously. Um, a few things of note, uh, most people, uh, depending on the spec, however, have more spell resistance than physical resistance. So this could be a slight nerf, like maybe 1% or 2% damage on the Stamina Templar. However... If people are running more heavy armor, since the armor penalties and whatnot, having more magic damage could possibly even make this kind of even out or even a little bit more damage. It's hard to say. It's a lot of speculation to an extent. But like I said, it's not really a nerf or a buff for the Magicka Templars, but for the Stamina Templars, it's hard to really determine at this point in time. But it overall isn't really a massive change. The next thing they did was to Piercing Javelin. Now this was a pretty massive buff to this skill and ability. What it looks like is it's it's built for the role player and it's really strong. So this ability and its morphs, so this is the Magicka and the Stamina version of Javelin, now bypass, block, and live up to their name. So I guess that's the, where the role play aspect comes from. So this is pretty big. This means that if you are blocking, it just works like fossilize, where you it doesn't matter if you're blocking, doing any of that, you're going to get stunned. And that's massive for PvP, especially for a type of ganking spec with Javelin. Uh, it, it's pretty big. It's any type of stun that goes through block is a very, very strong stun. You have skills like Fear on the Nightblade, the Turn Evil on the Fighter's Guild, Fossilize on the Dragonite. All of those are very strong. So this is a pretty big buff. If you do want to play Stamina Templar next update, I think this will be very massive. Now for Magic Templar, I think they benefit more from toppling charge, in my opinion, in my play style. So I probably won't be using the Magicka Morph unless I wanted to play like a range Plar with like Dark Flare and all of that. But I think this is a massive buff to Stamplars for their overall burst potential as you can no longer just hold L2 or hold block against Stamplars that are putting a lot of pressure on you as the javelin will go through block and that also already goes through resistances as well so it's a very very nice buff so a kind of a nerf to stamplars in my opinion is the biting jabs change um this morph now grants major brutality and sorcery for 10 seconds after casting it rather than ma major savagery for eight seconds as sunfire already gives both savagery and prophecy now so the issue with this is healing uh, mainly this provided you with the savagery to give you critical healing on your back bar so if you hit your biting jabs and you swap bars to you know hit a cleanse hit your rune focus that would give you a lot of healing potential for critical heals um this is definitely a big buff for pve however but obviously this is a pvp channel so this is seen as a nerf uh, in my opinion 
Uh, it's not going to be too bad because I typically already ran Camel Hunter on my front bar, but on my back bar, this is definitely a pretty massive change. However, you can see Stamplars utilizing with the hybridization of scaling and all that, um, do wield in resto now and not having to use rally and still having access to major uh, brutality and major sorcery while also having access to minor sorcery as well from the Templar passives overall giving them damage uh, without having to utilize the 2 h like rally to give them their their damage bonuses so this could be an overall decent change but I still think it's a slight nerf uh, to Stamplars uh, definitely it really won't affect Magplars too much as Magplars probably won't ever use biting jabs as puncturing sweeps is just much better in my opinion for that type of playstyle. Uh, the next buff is radiant ward now this could be very interesting um for a lot of things so increases the shield scaling per enemy hit to 20 percent up from nine percent this is a pretty big buff 11 percent is massive um with damage shields builds and all that it's hard to speculate on the potential this could have because these these builds really haven't been viable for a long time. They could make a comeback for sure. Uh, this is a definitely a big buff, and there could be some theory crafting and and build um, specking that you could could get this to to a, a more viable state with the hybrid scaling and all of that. This could definitely make a very prominent uh, unique tank build that I think has has a lot of potential for survivability. And all that this definitely could be very interesting I have to wait to see on kind of how this kind of shifts to the meta but i remember back in the day there was there was a blazing shield builds that used to actually kill people um returning damage so this could be very interesting i i don't know if this is that exact morph that returns damage i could be wrong but this could definitely be very very interesting an overall good balance change though is the the adjustment to living dark this skill is very annoying to go against it's one of the strongest healing skills in the game that provides so much utility to the Templar class. And I think it's one of the reasons why they are so powerful uh, in PvP and they're so tanky. So Living Dark, they reduce the snare potency of this morph down to 40% down from overall 60%. So this means uh, whenever you hit a Templar with this skill active, you were snared by 60%. You literally felt like a snail. Um, it didn't matter. What you did really, if you hit a shuffle or race against time, that helped. But if you hit them right afterwards, two seconds later, uh, especially with race against time, you were immediately snared to 60%. So you're basically a snail. I think this will help. However, I think 30% would be a viable change that where you don't feel so snared, but it helps you land your puncturing sweeps um, on the Templar and or biting jabs uh, on the Stamplar. I think this is overall a good change. I definitely think that this was a little bit overtuned. The snare was so massive that you couldn't move. So I definitely think this is a good quality of life change for several other builds. So that's really all the important changes to the class overall. Like I said, it really wasn't a nerf, uh, more, more or less a buff, especially the piercing javelin, which will make a very big difference in killing at least good players for sure. As really, you know, kind of not so great players didn't really have defensive capabilities against Javelin, but definitely against a good player. Having a CC that can now not be blocked is definitely going to shake up the meta and definitely going to make Stamplars a lot stronger in PvP, in my opinion. All right, guys. So now that we've gone through the changes coming in update 33 for the Templar class specifically, I feel comfortable enough kind of talking about what builds and spec ideas I have for the Templar. It's one of my main classes. I've played this extensively on the live server and nothing really drastically uh, to a huge degree, especially for the Magplar. For the Stamplar, it's a little bit different, but I feel comfortable enough releasing that as well to kind of show you guys what I'm running. Now, I know there's going to be someone in the comment section, oh, Godzilla's releasing a PvP build and he hasn't even tested it yet. He's just in it for the views. I know there's going to be going to be people like that but i'm trying to provide my expertise because i love the templar i'm very well versed in this class i know it in and out and i'm comfortable enough releasing and you guys know i don't give you bad builds you guys know that so i don't think going over the champion points is too important as this is just a quick overview but i've been looking at this set for a long time and boy let me tell you Aryan's thunder is one of the best sets next patch especially for the Templar. It's been low key for a while. I've not farmed it. Nobody's really talked about it too much, but this set slaps. This is like a three fourths of a puncturing sweep. 
Uh, you guys see some gameplay in the background, me dueling um, with this. This is very good. This is going to be insane for PvP. This will be one of the better sets next patch. I think for the Templar, has a lot of options. I think best in slot back bar set is Olarim. Uh, there's no going around that. Olarim is one of the best back bar sets for Templars. It's just very easy to proc. You get in combat, whatever. And you light attack and hit your rune focus. It's very easy. It lasts for 20 seconds. One of the best sets. I understand this is a, this is a trial set. And many people may not have access to it. If you don't have this, you could go Aryans and Clever Alchemist. That's not that big of a deal. Um, it's not going to be perfect by any means, but it's definitely a very solid spec. And it would be something I would put my name on. Uh, monster set is obviously going to be Magma Incarnate. This is the best monster set for Templar. Templars scale very, very nicely with spell damage. As their passives... Um, provide them with a bunch of damage for example the balanced warrior gives them six percent weapon and spell damage and then you have the minor sorcery that gives them even more damage um spell damage so stacking spell damage is the most important thing on on the on the templar it, it, even for stamplar uh next patch as well which we'll go into here in a little bit uh one piece training um and then all tricyclyphs lifts on the on the body for this spec however i had to go with four light um, two heavy and one medium. I would suggest three light, three heavy, one medium. You can do that with Clever Alchemist, um, as we'll talk about here in a second. But I suggest three, three, one. But with this Olarim and Aryan, since Aryan is light, you do have to run four light. And then for jewelry, two infused spell damage, one Majesty Swift spell damage. All spell damage on the jewelry is definitely best in slot, uh, in my opinion. Um, and since we did have to adjust our health a little bit because we lost access to the Clever Alchemist, since that is our live server setup that we're running, this is just something else I do want to try. Uh, you can adjust your attributes and you'll have a little bit more max magicka with the Clever Alchemist setup. Um, but food is smoke there, haunch, and our potions are spell power. Um, very, very simple. And yeah, so this is the best in slot food. Uh, we are vampire stage three uh definitely very very recommended and the atriarch mundus um so we'll look at stats real fast i mean it's not nothing crazy i don't want to take too long on the build you know i'll probably release a full version obviously on the on live server but we're about six seven k spell damage um our tool tip um Aryans is 3k like i said this thing hits for about a three-fourths of a puncturing sweep i have some cmx numbers that you'll be able to tell the damage um, it's dealing 10% of my damage, so that's quite a bit. That's comparable to Burning Light, which is already very, very strong. So having Aryan's proc set on the Templar is very nice. I really recommend this um, highly. It's it's definitely worth a try. However, like I've been talking about my Clever Alchemist spec, this is what I find to be the best in slot for most situations. Um, Clever Alchemist is just such a great set, okay? It gives you so much damage, and... You have way more spell damage with this spec than you do with the than you do with the Aryan. So if we proc our Olarim, we have upwards of almost 8k spell damage. So like quite a bit more damage, right? Um, this isn't even including our Magma Incarnate as well. We haven't been able to proc that because we're not taking any damage. But you guys get the drift. You guys already know my Magplar spec. This is what I find the most viable. Also, another reason why is we get more max health bonuses because of the Clever Alchemist which means we can get more magicka because we can scale less points into health from our attributes. I think actually on the live server, I have zero points into health and 64 into magic with this Clever Alchemist spec. But regardless, Templars are so tanky as is, especially the Magplar, and I think this will be the best Templar next patch. Stamplar is getting some big buffs, but like you, you can't beat this Magplar, man. This is such a great spec overall. You already have a good burst heal. You have good healing over time. It's just... Magic Templar is so much better, I think, than Stamp Templar. At least my my thoughts going into this update and how it feels right now on the live server. Sure, Templars are getting or Stamplars are getting some nice buffs. This this Templar is just so good. Um, but that's really it for this spec, guys. I mean, you guys already know my Magplar. I just wanted to share this Aryans. Um, you could even use this on the Stamplar, but we're gonna go over that here in just two seconds and kind of talk about that spec and looking at kind of what I'm running on that. All right, guys, so now we are on my stamina Templar. So let's talk about the hybridization of skills. I think this is more important than really even the sets. 
So what's really happening on the Stamplar is you're going to be actually able to utilize magicka healing skills like onto the dead like radiating re regeneration this is where the hybrid scaling is gonna take full effect especially on stamina specs um also living dark will now also scale off of your weapon and spell damage and or your maximum health whichever result in obviously a stronger heal as it says there on the bottom so that's the important aspects of the stamplar and most stamina classes coming into update 33. with that being said i actually have three specs that i'm looking at so the first one is going to be clever alk you could really insert any from bar set you want here you could do aryans you could do deadly whatever you prefer but i'm thinking clever alchemist is overall going to be better for my personal spec for my back bar i'm looking at wretched vitality this is a very easy set to proc as all you have to do is hit a major and minor buff. So easiest way to explain this is hit your armor buff. This is going to provide you the major buff, but also you proc the minor buff from the minor mending from being inside your uh, channel focus. This the psychic round passive right here. So this is going to proc the major and minor buff that lasts for uh, 15 seconds. And it gives you upwards of 390 recovery. This is my more conventional spec than one I'm probably going to be using next patch. There are a few others that have a little bit more damage. Um, but overall, this is my most balanced spec that I think is going to be the quite the meta for most classes uh, in general. It's Clever, Alchemist, and Wretched Vitality. I think this is the meta spec uh, going into next update to be able to sustain your magic pool and also your, you know, your, your stamina pool because it's going to give you a lot of recovery. Now, you could go Resto Staff back bar. You could also go just a regular old 2H. You can, you can run that as well. Um, if you were to do that, you'd probably just run Race Against Time. You could do Honor the Dead with Rally. Um, but I would probably end up recommending just going back to good old Elude. And I'll show you this on my other specs, kind of my, my 2H bar setup. But you can go 2H with Rally if you feel more comfortable in that scenario. Um, but that's just up to you. Now for jewelry, this is weird, I understand, but this is how Templar is going to be going on from here on out. It is best in slot to go spell damage on a stamina Templar. Yes, you heard me correctly. Spell damage on your jewelry for the stamina Templar. The reason that is, people are going to be like, why are you doing this? Is because of the Dawn's Wrath passive. This gives us access to minor sorcery. So you're going to get 10% free spell damage. For utilizing any of the abilities and we already use power of the light and living dark so that being said you're going to get more damage through spell damage on the stamplar rather than weapon damage that's just the truth of the reality of the situation doesn't matter how you go about it because we already have access to, from our weapon and spell damage from biting jabs that's why we can drop rally from the 2h so we get both buffs from this and we get the minor sorcery, so it's best to go with spell damage. Uh, looking down here, since we lost the critical chance, this is a caveat that I do want to mention. It could be better to go Malakath now on this on the Templar. The reason being, uh, the only drawback I would say is because of this Adric Spear passive taking advantage of 10% more critical damage, but that's really not that big of a deal. It's only uh, 660 critical resistance that can mitigate this. So this really isn't too big rather than gaining 16% more damage with Malakath. The reason I say we may have to do that is it depends on the spec you run. If you run bubble on your front bar, which is probably what most people will do, um, you lose access to the critical chance. So you lose access to something like Camel Hunter, which I run on the live server, which will give us both major savagery and major prophecy. But also it's going to give us more weapon damage and all that so on my other specs i do run this and i will show you here in two seconds don't worry but if you're going to run living dark then you it may be more beneficial to a malakath this is definitely an option um but i do want to take advantage of my class critical damage passive but regardless majesty is still great it gives us a little bit of mitigation and a little bit of damage so this could end up being neck and neck but definitely want to put that out there so let's go over my buff stats really quickly um, and then we'll go into the second spec. So, get in combat, proc our wretched. Um, so yeah, we're at 2200 uh, stem recovery, 15 1600 mag recovery. 
um, on this thing. Very, very good spec overall. So if we proc our clever, we're at upwards of 6,500 spell damage, 2,700 sam recovery, 2k mag recovery. If you are using rally, uh, you will be at 3k sam recovery with a spec. Uh, but obviously with the rest of the staff, we're not going to have access to the minor endurance. So this is definitely going to be a little bit different. The pros of this spec is definitely the healing over time. The magic sustain is much easier to, to sustain this as well as you will get access to major mending as well as minor mending now on the Stamplar. Being able to have your resto, you know, you can get some insane tooltip heals upwards of, you know, well, it gets a lot higher with obviously with our, with our spell damage buff as well. I forgot to even buff up with that. So yeah, you actually have a lot more damage than what I showed. I'm just a big dummy sometimes. Let me proc this, let me proc my light attack. Okay. So we have 7,500 spell damage. I'm my bad. So you can definitely see the potential of the overall healing that you're going to get with this thing. Um, you know, on our on our resto bar, 18 k tooltip without even really without our magma incarnate up even. So definitely can get a lot of healing potential on on this type of build. Um, it's definitely going to be very interesting. It's definitely going to throw a loop into PvP, uh, especially on the sampler, because being able to utilize resto and dual wield is very interesting. Um, so let's go into the second spec. Uh, this is going to be utilizing Olarim and Clever Alchemist. So this is similar to my Magplar spec, but we're putting Olarim on the back bar. It's a little bit different. We're, so we're using Dual Wield in 2H, so the more conventional spec. The only drawbacks to this setup, however, is the stamina recovery. So you may possibly want to go with Lava Foot, Soup, and Saltrice, and we do utilize that on the other spec. You lose a lot of recovery dropping that Rector Vitality, but you gain a lot of damage with the Olarim. Uh, it's pretty much everything else is the same. Still the same recommendations with Malakath, possibly, if you want to utilize that. Spell damage on the jewelry. This is something I'm looking at personally. I would probably want to go with Camel Hunter because this is stacking a lot of damage. So I would probably go with Camel Hunter here. Um, and utilizing Lava Foot Soup and Salt Trice food because we don't need that much mag recovery at that point. Um, if we're not going to be using bubble. So that's just a, a just small recommendation. If you wanted to use this type of spec, it could be very interesting. And then for the last build, this is utilizing the same concept for the Magplar. So like I said, you can play like a Stamplar, Magplar, whatever, uh, with a lot of these sets. So for this build, we do run Lava Foot. So we adjust our attributes around to get about 30k health. This is much more overall stamina sustain. Um, for this type of build, this is more conventional. This is more of a stamina Templar rather than running all the hybrid skills. So we're running Aryan's Thunder on the front bar. This is the same concept on the Magplar with Clever Alchemist on the back. Uh, you could do Resto here if you wanted to, but I think this is more stacking damage um, to buff up your Aryan's proc set. So I would think 2H would be more suitable here. Still the same monster set, Magma, all spell damage. Um, on the jewelry so this spec is more conventional like i said uh, we're using camo hunter here so this will have less overall tankiness but overall more damage and it'll have that decent spell uh, weapon to spell critical so for this type of build i would suggest majesty because you're going to take advantage of this critical chance but if you wanted to drop that you could and go with bubble here and then run smoked bear for your food You'd have a little bit more mag recovery, um, but you'd have a little bit less uh, overall max stamina, which I do like. I do like having around 26k. That is a nice number. Um, so let's look up here. Let's buff up real fast. So this is with Clever Alk. So our Aryan's tool tip is about 3600. Obviously, this is without Majesty. This will give you a lot of AOE pressure with Aryan's. I think this is a lot of potential among this type of spec, and I really can't wait to try it. Um, people may ask, what about Aryans in Olarim? I don't recommend that because you're going to have so many light armor pieces at that point that it's not going to be as beneficial as utilizing 5 medium because 5 medium is very, very strong for the overall Templar. Uh, for my race, I am a uh, Orc. I think Orc is the best. Orc, Dark Elf, anything with weapon damage. High Elf even could work on this type of build. I think that could be one of the most viable actually specs next patch is a high elf templar even running some stamina abilities like more like a stamplar but still utilizing the high elf race 
Um, for all these builds, I've been using the Serpent Monday Stone. This is the best in slot pound for pounds. Um, even if we're if you even if you're using Wretched Vitality, it's still better in my opinion to go with the Serpent, as you can get the exponential growth of your overall recovery. That's why you have upward of 3k uh, with the 2h. And then foods bounce around between Lava Foot Soup and Salt Trice and the Smoke Bear Haunch. It just depends on what you need, either more mag recovery or overall more stamina sustain. It's really dependent on you. But yeah, that's really it for the builds, guys. Uh, I hope that provide enough explanation on kind of my thoughts and reasoning behind it. I think Templar, especially Stamplar, will get a little bit better. I think personally, the biggest thing, though, is the Binding Javelin change. This is very massive for this build, as oftentimes what happens is you hit your Power of the Light, you go into all this damage, and they just hold block. But now with Piercing Javelin, it's going to go through the resistances and also block. So this will allow for some huge bursts with Power of the Light, especially into a Crescent Sweep. All this damage over time, Orion's Thunder, all that, they can't block the CC, and that Power of the Light's going to go burr. Uh, it's going to hit very, very hard. But I hope this kind of helps you guys uh, for next patch. I'm very comfortable releasing these builds. These are some of the specs I'm going to be using next patch that I know will be very strong. If there's something else that comes across my radar and I change something, obviously I'm going to do an update of build once this goes live. But I just wanted to give you guys some pointers going into next update. But that's it for me. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.